They have, but they've also had some good players too. And as I said, they need everything going right for them. Hawks just look like they have their measure at the moment. They compose themselves in the second quarter. So, second half, we know these teams run out the games very, very well. So we're set to go. The margin is 11 points at the long bait, favouring Hawthorne. Here's the second half. After quarter time, so up to about 74,500 here at the G. Brust out of the middle for Hawthorne. With a good start for the Hawks as they go deep. Spanger's down there at the moment. Started in the goal square, Spanger. Mm. Langford to Mitchell. Here is Spanger contesting here. Maybe they just want him to provide a contest. As Hartlett eases the ball out to White. Jordan Lewis is down behind play. And it oh, looks like he's holding his leg. The speed of White was magnificent then. The kick wasn't so good. He was looking for Westhoff and couldn't find him. And he gets his own footy in the end. Yeah, there's Jordan Lewis. And he laid down with that leg and hobbling badly here, Jordan Lewis. So this is a big story. Now he gives the Gee, that looks left knee a yeah. bit of a... That looks medial ligament style left knee to me. Landed in that way, opened up the inside of the knee a little bit. So that is intriguing. And I would say you're right to ask Jordan Lewis, I think, may well be in a bit of trouble with medial ligament left knee. Straight off the ground he is. Jordan Lewis, that ball is held up. It's starting to back. free up a little bit. Gee. Have a look at this. The land on the left knee. Maybe. Or was it knee-on-knee -knee contact, maybe, which it might be just jarred, hopefully, yep. would be the best result. Didn't, there wasn't a lot of twisting in the knee there. It remained relatively straight. Have a look at the way they examine that will tell us. He's more jamming his knee into Spanger's knee, I, I think, at that angle. But no, He's pointing to the outside of the knee here, and perhaps just above it. So, outside of the knee, not the inside. So Jordan Lewis, I wonder what's going through Brad Sewell's mind right at the moment. As Lewis contemplates and the doctors look and he's glued to the screen is Brad Sewell having a look at what is going on down there with Jordan Lewis. And there's no doubt going through his mind there was something more than this game. If they were to make it, Bruce with the fend off. Suckling. Puopolo had to go back. Been a quietish day by Puopolo's lofty standards this year. Took him on there, Homsch. Got pinned. Boak. Up and under. Winds to Need. Need needs a little space. Now Boak decides to go down the line. Good kick to White. Back inside. Gibson's got him from behind. And now Polak finishes in the middle to Gray. Well, this is a move that... Changed the game last week. He got four third quarter goals, Robbie Gray. He started uh, in the goal square as you have another look at Jordan Lewis's knee. Yeah, just a contact one there, we think now. He's up. Yeah, Richo, definitely a, uh, a contact one. Looks like a clash of knees. They see it strapping up, so they're pretty keen to get him back out in the ground. Oh, that's a great result, Lingy. A really good result. There's Gray to try and start something here for Port. Beautiful kick, well designed. Port get the first goal of the second half. Yeah, a bit of deja vu maybe here. There's Jordan Lewis. He looks like it's already freeing up. Bit of a corky probably. Just above his knee. But you're right, Dash. You were just talking about uh, Robbie Gray going forward. He's got the matchup on Luke Hodge and he had the whole 50 to work in then. Impossible for any defender to stop that. Well, definite scare for Hawthorne fans, but it looks like it could be OK. We reckon it was a corky above the knee. So a bit of knee-on-knee -knee action, but uh, above, and he looks OK. Strapped up, on the phone, ready to get back out there. Yeah, that would be a really good result, Lingy. No question. So Port Adelaide, fast start here in this third term. Mitchell gets a look. Just took a little too long and broke. Port Adelaide. With a goal-saving tackle. Yeah, what a great tackle. You've got to get rid of it straight away in these games, don't you? The heat. Kick to White. Jaray did well to defend. Now Homs goes down the line. Westhoff. Able to fingertip that one. Turns inside. Goes long and deep. Big opportunity here for Gray and Birchall. 
I think this is really interesting. Robbie Gray playing genuine full forward. Grant Birchall, who's an All-Australian half-back, but he won't be comfortable playing full-back on Gray. And as good as this Hawthorne defence is, and they are brilliant team defence, they haven't got a great natural small defender to play on Robbie Gray. And so they're having to manufacture it. And I think we'll see a lot of him at full forward from uh, this second half on. Hill stretching the kick there and well cut off by Ebert. Well, it's going to be more about the pressure up the ground, limiting the clean ball going into Robbie Gray. That's what you're going to have to rely on because if it is clean, he will he will win those battles. Gee, they're loving the atmosphere of all arenas. They went to Patterson Stadium, Port, and did the job there. They love their Adelaide Oval and here in front of 70,000. They've only played in front of 70,000 three times before, and that was in the two grand finals and one prelim final. And this will be a 70-plus today, so... They are enjoying the big occasions, Paul. And they've started this third quarter really well. So that would please Ken Hinckley. Once again, falling a little short on the throw-in. Langford, Burgoyne and Hill combined. And there, Isaac Hamish. Smith. There, oh. So Hawthorne by four. It's been a real methodical game. It hasn't been heavy pace from one end to the other. Really, at any stage, Tess Bruce kept it alive. Opens up the goal face. Little handball sideways to Suck. Uh, to Hodge it was. Hodge goals. Hawthorne back in front by 10. Just some individual brilliance there from Luke Bruce. Great stuff. Yeah, great news. Jordan Lewis back out in the centre. Dr. Rowan White is working for Triple M today. What can you tell us about it, Doc? Yeah, Luke, good uh, news for Jordan Lewis. Copped a knock uh, in that left quadricep and uh, a bit of friendly fire. Pretty sore when he came off, but he's run it out. They've got the compression on it. He's fine. He'll continue for the rest of the game. OK, so that's good news for Hawthorne supporters. And this is even better. Rough head strolling towards goal. He's got good length in the kick. And he gets it. Biggest lead of the game here with the Hawks. 16 points. Well, how good's that, uh, Lingy? You love that. Oh, don't you love it, Richo? Jordan Lewis, well, we know how good a player he is. We know how tough he is. The doc just spoke about that. But look at this. In the contest, quick, sharp hands. Even with a sore corky above the knee, he can still get the job done. Ruffy goes bang for goal number four. Great play by the Hawks out of the middle. How yeah. good is it, though, when Jared Roughhead, who's your key forward, can go into the middle and do that sort of stuff? Uh, it's brilliant, isn't it? He would have watched last night. He would have seen his good mate, Buddy, up there dominating. And he's turning on a bit of a display himself here. Four goals for Big Ruff. He's been a big factor in this game. Four kicks, four goals for Roughhead. Equals his biggest finals bag. He a rough head in the biggest margin of the game, as I mentioned, 16 points now. What a Port can do here. Winds around the corner. That'll be out of bounds on the full. And they just keep throwing different looks at Port Adelaide Adelaide's inside that Ford 50. Segler and Spanger are playing deep now. Rough head and Gunston have come up. Bruce is off to a flyer. Oh, That's this dangerous. is a risky, risky kick. Need and Hill. Hill did well, though. Kept his composure. Duray. Big collision early in the game with Matty White. Kick up to Gunston. Poor bounce for him. Homs couldn't get it either. Buopolo's in there. Throws himself at the footy. Handball in front of Isaac Smith. Had trouble picking it up. Concern on the face of Ken Hinckley. And Alistair Clarkson. Enjoying the moment just a moment ago when that last goal of Roughhead was kicked. A rare show of emotion for him. Hill, the don't argue, runs him twice on Polak, and I'm not sure he handballed it. He's having a good look at Ollie Wines on screen there. Lee, he was extraordinary last week to get his side over the line. The 19-year-old, three goals. Pretty quiet so, so far, just the eight disposals. Yeah, probably just struggling a little bit today, Das. 
Jordan Lewis is playing a little bit on him. Liam Shields even at times. They're just covering each other really well at Hawthorne. They're not playing any super hard tags apart from Langford on Boak, obviously. Sure. But Wines just can't get himself into the game. But we know they're going to come home strong, Port Adelaide. They've done it all year. Oh, Sam Mitchell leading the way. Two real hard ball wins there from Mitchell. The first one was sensational. Lewis, so stepping up in the contested footy here. Hawthorne at the moment. Look at them closing in. Alapati Carlo with the Lewis tackle. It's gone up a notch, though. How hot was that footy in around that contest there? No team could get a clear advantage. Oh, Look at this. what you were talking about, yeah. Brian. And then he followed up with another one. And then Ella Paddy Carlisle trying to motivate his team there at the end says, come on, after he applied the tackle. They've got to do it now. Uh, Port Adelaide, or they're in big trouble. Spanger almost stuck it in the hands. O'Shea's got him wrapped up. Yeah, real crucial period now for Port Adelaide. Hawthorne is uh, sieging forward. In danger of opening up. You're right, Richo. Good to see the lights are still on. Yes, uh, they are, Das. <laughs> Unusual thing at night. Hartlett tried to crash through. They're not sieging for it either, advantage, are they? They're surging. Advantage, advantage. O'Shea out wide. This has got to be a grey win in the air here. Did well, Jeray. Now grey at the ground level. Turned his man around. Good kick. Didn't get over the top and late cuts it off. On the counter. Got it in the hands of the long striding oh, Isaac hold. Smith. Two goals to one in the quarter in favour of the Hawks. Smith goes deep. Hail the target. No ground level player there. Alapati Carlo has done quite well in defence. Monfries to Trengove. It was knocked out in the tackle. Broadbent back to Carlo. Got pinged with the footy. Hill looking for the give and go. Lewis said, I can go and finds Ruffhead. And he'll line up Ruffhead. He'll line up for his fifth goal. Yeah, the pressure's gone right up. And the Hawks are winning all the crucial 50-50 balls now. They're starting to get players forward to the footy as well. Ruff just sneaked out the back here. He anticipated what was going to happen. Defended ball watching. He's so smart. He knows when to drop back and when to get involved. Kicks this. And it's more goals than he's kicked in any final before Ruffhead. He's got five. 22-point lead to the Hawks. Oh, they love Ruffy, the Hawks fans. What a player. All-Australian again in 2014. Such a complete player. He loves it. Uh, he's been a big factor. Five goals. Just made the most of all the opportunities. And it's a nice little break now for Hawthorne. 22-point margin. I'll be feeling a little better about their opportunity now. Well, the rough kicks five here, basically at a half a footy. Buddy got five last night. Will boys. we see the two big boys banging it out next week? The former teammates, the former dynamic duo. You just saw the clearances there. Last ten clearances, nine of them have gone Hawthorne's way. Make that ten of eleven. 22-point Hawthorne lead. Really, Port have got to kick the next goal here. Hold man, hold. Schultz is trapped in the pocket there. That's not a good spot to be. White trying to get him to come at the footy and puts it into a bit of space here, but did well, Virgil. There is Schultz. It's going to get that much harder to score inside 50, I reckon, for Port Adelaide. They need some goals out of their big players now. Schultz, Westhoff. They need to take some marks. You can't rely on your smaller players all night. You need gotta, some goals out of your keys. Got to get some fast entries into their 50. Hawthorne not allowing them to enter at a rapid pace. Here's Spanger, who's been moved forward in this quarter. As Das has pointed out, Trengove tries to dig it out of the trenches and inspire his team. O'Shea's there. There's one player that they seriously need to get something out of. Chad Wingard, two possessions, no influence. Brian Lake's done it again. He has absolutely taken him right out of the game. Puopolo out of bounds on the full. And he too has the sharp do for today. The man made of muscle. 
So Port Adelaide, this, this you would the, think it's do or die period of yeah. time for them now, and isn't they've it? Just got to try and get their run going. I mean, Hawthorne have stopped them here. They've got to go down the line, but that's the worst result for Port at the moment. It's Wingard trying that's to what put Hawthorne his nose might. over that. Sorry, Richo. Polak to Wingard. Holding. So Polak Port wins Adelaide. the free. Jared, Jared, behind the mark here. Jared, behind the mark here. Hawks have got a great setup here, though. Now they can't get anything fast going, Port. And straight away, Richo, the Hawthorne midfielders and forwards up the line, not allowing that kick inside of the corridor. Force that wide one. They've got to go along the boundary. Boat goes long. Need the target. Monfrey's working back. What a courageous attempt at mark. That was sensational. Team lifting stuff from Monfrey's. Yeah, what a great mark. Gibson was brave as well, going back with the plot. This was crucial, though. Boak was able to break that tackle. Ruffy, if he had his time again, he would have loved to have corralled him out of play. But look at that. That, that is, is extraordinary yeah. courage, BT. Great call from you. He had no regard for his own safety there. That's Jonathan Brown, Nick Rewalt like Anything could have been coming the other way. He's a hooker of the ball. He's a little right-to-left worker. Sensational stuff from Monfries. Kicks it low. Gets the goal. Port Adelaide are back in business again. Yeah, massive goal against the flow of play. And the courage there was unbelievable. He had no idea what was coming the other way. Shows you the desperation of all of these players out there. They want to play in a grand final next week. And then went back and put the goal through. Keeps them within that three-goal margin now. And we know they're a great team. They finish so strong with their fitness. These are sometimes the sort of moments that change finals games. One indiv individual brilliant act of courage. Angus Monfries against the flow of play, kicks a big goal. Margin back to 16 points. We might look back at that moment and work out how significant it was. So clearance of vital consequence here. Well, it's 10-1 now, BT, the clearances in this quarter. We've got to get something going here. The football, go the Port Adelaide, get their forwards a, a good look at it. Lewis up, he's recovered. And as Doc Rowan White said he would. O'Shea now inside 50. Monfries again over the back, West off. It's Robbie Gray though. His score involvement's uh, a second in the comp, I think, behind Lance Franklin. And that's why he can get up the ground. And he's so creative, he doesn't release the football until he knows his teammates got time and space to deliver. He holds onto it just Ryan, long enough. Ryan, just senses everything around him, Robbie Gray. Big kick from West off. Only a 20-metre kick, as you can see. A little bit of angle and Porter back big time. Porter back within 10 points. That's a big play. Monfries takes one of the marks of the year for me in a final. Back with the flight, and then Robbie Gray. He is a jet, that man on screen. He's had one of the best individual seasons. I'd be surprised to see him with a brown low around his neck come Monday night. And that's a big, big play. Big answer. Two goals in a row. <laughs> There's an enormous amount of tension in this ground at the moment. Well, Angus Monfrey's just lifted the team with that mark. And this is a little bit different, but again, brilliant. Watch him just protect the space here, realise his teammate had it. He didn't pull out of that, Angus Monfrey's. He showed the one before, he doesn't do that. He knew his teammate had that good voice Look. and just allowed him to take the mark. Well, well done. Watch Hodge and Gray here. Hodge went for the win. He went for the win there. Langford tried to run away with the footy. He was nailed okay, in the tackle. Trying that, to get out. that bounce could have nearly been recalled then, I reckon. It's right on the edge of the circle. So every contest now so important. Here's Gray, couldn't win it. Langford to Hodge. Hodge with a low spiral. Mark won't be paid. It was touched off the boot. Opportunity for Gunston. Spun around. Had a little ping. And sent it a little wide, but they lock it in their forward 50. Yeah, good result. Get a stoppage now. All their backs will press up. Three goals apiece in the third quarter. Trimmed the half-time margin back by a point now, Port Adelaide. Did trail by 22. Boak. Play on. Play on. Wingard, what about that handball? Play on. 
And again, Bertolo, this time a rough head. Kick five today. Hodge, oh, great control. Great composure from the skipper. That's what you want. Just play us with poise, Ruffy. Poised to get it out to Hodge. Didn't blaze away. And gets it to another man who you'd be surprised if he misses. Sean Burgoyne. He's got two and a half metres. Part of the... 2007 grand final side the last time they were in a grand final port adelaide this man here sean burgoyne now playing for the opposition sets himself with a big kick from just outside 50 to the right never going to kick it when you pump <laughs> pump him up are you so broadbent who has been their designated kicker for most of the year First preference. Kicks that low and hard down the middle. She wind hard, couldn't oh, bring it John, to ground. Outmarked by Roughhead. Right on the line. Roughhead just sensing. He's waiting for a lead as the first oh. option, but also sensing. Oh. He's a little chance. He gives it absolutely a big hoik. Oh, and misses. Can do no wrong. These days, Jared Ruffhead. Out of bounds. It's out of bounds, Sam. Hold the meter! Seven minutes left in the third quarter. Now, have a look at the contested possessions in this, this quarter. 25-24. And that indicates just how close it is. Basically a point the difference. Carlisle went to ground. Spanger kept going. Now Broadbent's got to contend. Spang a sharp hands, Pioppolo high. Uh, he's still got him high though. Let him up, boys. Robbie, just back half a metre. Setting the angle. And there is the high tackle. So Pioppolo, look at him stepping around there. The umpire should just call play on when players do that. And he's done it again. Gone back to try and release the angle a little. Puopolo from a very difficult pocket. High ball, Gunson Spanger gave it to Bruce. Driven a little forward. Alapati Carlisle there, Hopsch. Pittard, got to be cool. He is. Westhoff's there, needs to compete. Lake in the back. Always played a push. Hawthorne by two goals. Play on. West off to the wing. Schultz there. Wines with strength through. Ebert gone out of the little game after a fast back. start. Advantage, advantage. Through the middle they go. Here's West off winding up. Deep inside, no one home. Rough head over the back and need. Needs to be clean, the big rough. And a gutsy kick to go back in there. They're sensing uh, the moment there, Ruff. They really pushed back hard. Fortunately for Port, they only had little Jake Need one out inside 50. And how good a kicking team of Hawthorne. Gee, you go through them and put a tick next to the elite kicks, and there's about 17 or 18 of them. Brust nailed by Jonas. That's a brilliant tackle there from Tommy Jonas. We know that Bruce's ability to get the don't argue going. And it nearly away had he... Got a bit more space. How good does that look? 74,500 under lights at the G. Saturday night on offer a spot in the grand final against Sydney. High footy had to go Alapati Carlisle. Broadbent now targets the footy. Off the hands of Hartlett. Hills a danger. Puopolo feeds to Lewis. Hawthorne back in control. And now Bertrand with the launch. Top of the square. Here comes Gunston. Over the back. Schultz gave it to O'Shea, who is immediately under the pump. They're under the pump, Port Adelaide, but they're holding up well. Look at the pressure. There. Eight tackles inside 50. You can just sense Hawthorne. that Port know the importance here as Hale busts through and does his own work. That's great play. No more satisfaction to get as a Ruckman than doing that. 
taking one out of midair and you get the run past your opponent. I think Lobie's held up really well, but Hale, he'd be very, very happy with himself there. That's a crucial goal at a really important time. Nothing more deflating than when you're playing in the Rutgery show and you're able to monster your opponent. Jack Trengo is not really a, a recognised Ruckman. He got pushed off it too easily. Big play from Hale. Crucial goal. Back out to 18 points, Stars. Both Ruckman confused what they should do. Just go and get the footy. Gray out of the middle yet again. Driving ball at the back here is Wingard. Wingard releases. Wanting the free. And possible cause for it. Yeah, he could have, could have argued a case there, Chad yep. Wingard. Not a lot in it, but it was a bit of high contact. Lobie to Gray. Gray pressing. Had shields, and he kicks it out of bounds in the full. Now, if this is a Wingard free, it favours his left, but I think it's going to be Corns. It is. I reckon he'll do the discipline thing. And he does exactly that, Richo. Top of the square, up they fly. Schultz launch, couldn't get hold of it. Bruce working from end to end here at the moment. Under pressure yet again in this quarter of Port Adelaide. They were 22 down at the 12-minute mark. And now they're 18 down at the 26-minute mark. Yeah, big win. But Port Adelaide is so good at intercepting that ball about 80 metres out. And coming back inside 50 and that was as good as a possession there from Ruffhead. Live shots coming out of the chopper of a big night in Melbourne. Prelim final. Mitchell. Ebert winds. Spinning pirouette. Driving footy. Schultz the target. Jeray in the back. Free kick Schultz. No, none do it. I think it was a good spoil. Okay. And it was, Richo, you're right. He helped uh, Brian Lake out. I reckon Schultz had worked Brian off the ball there. Thought I heard a whistle, but it must have been the boundary umpire. Here's Gray. Right foot snap. Didn't have a lot of time to sum it up, but they lock it at their forward end. Three minutes in the quarter remaining. He's a superstar, Richo. Robbie Gray. He is the most dangerous player on the ground. Everything he does is just almost a game-changing moment. Even when he hasn't got the footy, the pressure he puts on... Enormous from Robbie Gray. He, he nearly could have drawn a free kick at that stop. He is super dangerous at the moment around these stoppages. Josh Gibson here. I don't reckon he wanted to be in that oh, position. He should have got a free. Gee. On what they've paid here today, that should have been a free. Ebert on the run. They're all on the run here, Port. You know they'll commit to that. And with three minutes remaining in the quarter, they are in a good position to attack. Another goal here, back within two at three-quarter time. They'll have belief, Port. They come home strong. See who gets dangerous here for Port. Boak's in there. Look at Hill monitoring Gray. It's Just very... have a look at this stoppage now and see what they do. Yeah, that's it, BT. It's very clogged up at the moment. That's a great shot of this MCG spectacular sight. But Port, they've got to make some room for each other. They can't all be the person who gets on the end of it. So Langford nurses and caresses towards the boundary line, and it was really well done. Well, Haw Hawthorne have got extra numbers back inside 50 now. They've got two extras back. Hodge is back. He's trying to get more back. He's got Stratton and Gibson now. Tough to pick a winner from here. Langford out the back. Bruce goes and gets it. Been working hard at that end of the ground. He's caught here. Goes to Wines. Wines can wind up and go all the way. It's just off to the right. And the president just drew breath there. Can Hawthorne wind this clock down now? Go in with a three-goal lead. Two and a half minutes to do it, Richo. Can't concede now, Hawthorne. 17-point lead would be big in the context of the game. But we know, and I think we all agree, that if Port were within two or three goals at three-quarter time, the way they run out games, they are a huge chance here. Now, here's Alipati Carlisle. They can't afford to concede, though. Alipati Carlisle back up the middle. Ebert turns and goes. Low bullet wide. Schultz on the lead. Late there, and ball beats all. 
Two big wins for Hawthorne. Will Langford has really got Travis Boak under control in this third quarter. He was the best player on the ground just about the first half. 18 possessions. He's just had five, and Will Langford really locking on to the port skipper. Grace on his own here. Goals near this stoppage. And they knocked it down on the path. It almost got to him, Richo. And there's the matchup. Dars was talking about. Here's Boak now. One of the rare times in this quarter he's got loose, but Gibson. A minute 30, so they've soaked up the time, but it's been a little risky for the Hawks in the last few minutes here. Well, Port, Port have got one-on-one, -on -one, BT. It's really disciplined. Burgoyne, as a result of that one-on-one -on -one attitude, has to go down the line. G. Homp should have spoiled. Stratton claiming the mark, but that was no mark. He's uh, nice and composed, though. Handball to Hill. Hill can go to the long striding Smith. He can wind up and go all the way. Smith a bounce. Two. He'll launch. He's a big kick. Didn't try. Handball to Shields. And a bone crunching tackle by Alapeni Carlo. Rough head off the ground. That'll be a goal. That'll be a goal from Ruff. Rough head's got six. Hawthorne by 23 points with 47 seconds remaining in the third. Oh, how good is he? He can do it all, Ruff. Couple of soccer kicks off the ground, but take it back to Stratton. He won a crucial contest on the wing. Port had done well. They got one on one. They forced Hawthorne to kick long. Stratton won a ball in the air and get it down there to Ruffhead who can make something out of nothing. Lingy, you got some news? Well, I have. You can see in the little screen down the bottom there as we have another look at that goal from Jared Ruffhead. Sensational stuff. Jordan Lewis has been subbed out of this game. Of course, he's been sensational all night. 22 possessions. Jonathan Simpkin into the game for the Hawks. So that knock that he copped above his knee, obviously giving him a lot of trouble. Are they rolling the dice there, Lingy, and saying... You know, they're more hopeful of winning this than losing it. They're going to try and save him. Oh, I think it's a bit early for that one, BT. I don't think so, they'd lock this one in the bank just yet. So he must be under real doubt about next week if they were to make it then, if they've taken him off at this stage. Here's Jurey. Jurey of footy forward. Port fighting for survival in the last half a minute here got in the third. One more chance to launch something here. And they've got it because Monfries has found space. Gives to Polak, who was under Burgoyne pressure. Polak brushes the tackle. Gets back on the left. He got caught in the tackle. And now he's been caught. The umpire said play on. It was a clear call. It was a clear call. I thought he got a handball. I thought he got a handball. Geraint thought it was holding Thanks. the ball. Have a look. Thanks. Thank you. So he thought he'd been paid the free, but the whistle never blew. Brilliant from Sean Burgoyne. The chase down from behind. Massive play. Siren is going to sound. Third quarter comes. Jordan Lewis out. You can see red vested. Bad news for the Hawks there. But the good news is on the scoreboard. Three quarter time. And Hawthorne lead Port by 23 points. Second prelim final, 15,000 Port supporters marched into the G, and it was a spectacular opening quarter. Port actually dominated the first quarter. <clears throat> they led by 12 points, they led the contested ball. Monfrey's big collisions there, and Mead was excited to get this one as well in the second quarter, put them up by seven points. And then really Roughhead got going, he's kicked six. Jared Roughhead in this game. Halftime scores, Hawthorne by 11. And Roughhead was just kicking them from everywhere and put them 23 up. And this Monfries mark at the 15 minute mark of the third quarter gave Port an inspired chance until Roughhead once again kicking his sixth goal to put them 23 points up at three quarter time. There's some news down at ground level. Let's get down to Lingy. Port have made their sub. They certainly have Darcy Andrew Moore into the game, but it's Jackson Kringove who's been subbed out for Port Adelaide, which is a little bit of a surprise, but goes to show they are after a heap of run in this last quarter. They talk up their finishing ability. They've won 17 last quarters for the year, so they're going to have to do it. This one would be the biggest and the best of them all. And, of course, we mentioned in that third quarter that Jordan Lewis is the man who's been subbed out for Hawthorne with that knock above his knee. Jonathan Simpkin into the game.
Got to fix up clearances, Richard. They got absolutely smashed in that third quarter, Port. Yeah, they did 18 to 7. They're not going to get enough opportunities in the forward half of the ground if they go down 18 7 again in this last quarter. Must win it here. Have to give their forwards first chance. They've got to play on, take the game on at every opportunity. <laughs> got nothing to lose, Port. The men in the middle to try and get them rolling. Moore been activated as the sub for Port as well. Here's Wingard. Little ball to Birchall. Birchall out wide. Hodge gives chase. Ebert will arrive. They must score and do it early in this quarter, Port. Ted Wingard started off half back and charged through the square. They were trying to invent ways to get Chad Wingard into this contest. He's had only six possessions, no goals. Virtual wide. Hodge elevates over the top of Ebert. Right in front of the umpire's race there on the southern side. It's one of those times, Das, where old coaches say that you can be having a bad night, but you can actually turn your night around completely with the last quarter, couple of efforts, maybe one or two goals. You don't have to finish with a dirty night, despite the fact the first three quarters might have been quiet. Port's still alive, but they've never come from this far back at three-quarter time. 21 points twice, the biggest deficit they've overcome. Port Adelaide, kick wide, Jonas Marks. She's a good mark, Jonas. He's done that three or four times tonight in this position, wins it back for his team. We know their running capabilities, and when they get their tails going, they can really... Lingy, what about at ground level? Is there any signs that Port is showing a little bit of tiredness? They've had to come from Perth back to Adelaide over to Melbourne. Oh, Richard, it'll be one of the most incredible efforts if they run over the top of this Hawthorne outfit. They are going to roll the dice, though. You can see, even at this stoppage, everyone on the move, everybody getting momentum. If they can kick a couple early, tightness goes out the window, confidence comes. Polak gets a look, drives deep inside 50. Wingard got the box seat here, elevates, almost got hold of it. Little one by Gray around the corner. The man of the moment's kicked the goal. Port Adelaide are back in business. And it's those two players, the X Factor, as Slingy pointed out beautifully there, that players getting momentum through that stoppage. Polak gets it on the outside, whacks it in. Wingard nearly marked the ball. And he's partner in crime at ground level, Robbie Gray. Can't speak highly enough of him at the moment. Three goals again. How good is he? 22 touches. He's a superstar, Robbie Gray, now. So Robbie Gray didn't get a vote in the Brownlow medal last year. He might go from zero to winning it. Yeah. He has put together one of the best seasons we've seen for a long time. And... Another three-goal final. He's just had an unbelievable season. And six, six clearances, too. And just a big oh, moment man. player he's been in this game. Every time they've needed it, he's found a way to get it. Wines is the one that he'd like to join him, and that's a high tackle on Wines. And Ollie Wines, the boy from Machuca, will get the free here. So Port Adelaide on the early attack. Got it under three goals. So Burgoyne's playing deep. On Robbie on, Gray now. Wines looking yeah. wide. That's where all the space is, but they didn't go. They let him down. They didn't commit to the lead. Jurey. And I think that's what Kenny Hinkley might just have to do is they want Robbie Gray in the middle because he'll win probably three or four clearances and set you up. But I think he just has to persist and leave him in the goal square, see if he can kick two or three more and pull off a miracle here. There's no one else that you can see going to the square uh, for Paul. Wingard just hasn't looked lightly. Top. They look like that matchup's not worrying him. Was great. Yeah. That's, a, that's a really tough call. Rough <laughs> uh, decision there, Richard. Oh, Spanger didn't on. have it. No, Ollie Wines had the ball, and the umpire thought that Spanger had the footy. Goes short to Ebert. Well, you can't assume things. I think Spanger did pull it in in the first place, and I think that's the explanation of the free kick. Ebert goes long. Wingard is lurking at the back, looking to run it. Loby over the top has taken a beauty. This, this, to get it back to 11 points. So here it is. Spanger was the first man to dive on it and pull it in. And 
they'll say you can't do that, and that's why the free kick was paid. And then he copped one in the mush to go on with. A great effort from Loby. He's battled single-handedly against Segler and Hale for most of this match. And to go forward and take this big mark, BT's his, massive. It's his first kick of the night. He's done OK, having said that. He's competed pretty well. Yeah, he has. First kick of the night for Loby is a monster one. Kicks it across the face. And that's a little bit about that kick, knowing the idiosyncrasies of this ground. And he never looked like it. Started at the wrong spot. Had a bit of damage to the eye, didn't he? Birchall goes wide. Three on one in favour of Port. Broadbent to Need. Held onto it a little too long. He tried to get through there, Needy. Jeez, that's a great cap captain's tackle, isn't it? <laughs> this ragdoll Need. You like the body language of Port Adelaide here at the moment, though, as well. They certainly have not given up in any way, shape or form. West off. They're still playing like they're a real big chance here. Jeray looking for Spanger. Up goes Segler. Couldn't mark. Hartlett committed to the footy. Won it now. He tries to shuffle it out. Have a look at this. Alipati Carlisle in there with Spanger and Segler. They can't get past this point on the ground at the moment. Hawthorne. They've come forward three or four times and been rebounded from here each time. Those wires you see from the high shot are to keep the Seagulls out of the G. Find the ball, put the ball on the ground. Advantage! So Corns takes the opportunity, that advantage. He had the opportunity to put his hand up and said no, but he's kept it alive here. And Hodge... I'd get, I'd get rough head up to centre-half forward at the moment because they can't get through about 60 metres. And I'll get Spanger behind him. I think that's... You're all over him. That's exactly what's happening now. Alistair Clarkson's listening to you. They've pushed Hale forward and rough head further up the ground. Well done, Richo. You are all over it. Carlisle, there is Roughhead. Missed, though. Winds through traffic. Into the middle. Gibson awaits. Here's the little man, Mitchell. On his left side. Gives Spanger a chance. They go back and they mob him. Three on one. Bruce was there. Spanger pushes off. Gives Hale a chance. Here's Roughhead. Can he kick goal number seven? No, not just at the moment. The sub, Simpkin, Langford, little loopy handball, Gunston, and now Smith. No problems with the distance here for Smith. They've had him pretty well under control, Isaac Smith. We haven't seen a lot of that real running bounce, overlap, carry, and kick long. He's coming up for disposal number 16. And he normally hits the scoreboard as well, so this is a big moment for him. Isaac Smith from well within... Smith range, he lets it all hang out, and he just milked a beautiful big time goal. Hawthorne by 22. Oh, what a big time uh, shot at goal from Isaac Smith. They had to work really hard for that. Really struggling to get through that centre half forward position on the ground. That is kept at it, kept at it. And Smith uh, found himself with a bit of fat side space to lead into and with his pace if he's got grass in front of him he's going to get off his man and Gunston uh, put a nice kick in towards him really got through it nicely liked at the moment left the boot Hale, Hale's just come off with the blood rule and Roughhead's gone into the middle of the ground again little nick on the eye Loby's already had his work done on the eye. Back in the middle, 22-point margin. Here's Boak. Bustles to Wines. Wines to West off. Now Gibson gets in a position to spoil and did well. Every time this match with Hawthorne have kicked the goal, they've followed up with a second goal. And right now, at this stage, they cannot allow that to happen again, Port. They just simply have to kick the next goal. You feel like 28 points. Might be just one goal too many. Through the hands of Wines, Hill, Biopolo looking to go back to Hill. Simpkin. And just to relieve pressure, Langford really nicely to rough head. Stay there! Just senses the moment, rough, when to yeah. creep up the ground and get involved. 
Hodge wants to go way out west. Stratton. Gray made him earn it. Beautiful pick up and run here by Smith. Great chase by Ebert, but Smith realised he had to back off. Played within his capabilities. The 227s. Yeah, La Patty Carlisle. Broadbent. Pulverising Segler tackle. Now Broadbent's got it all to do. Gee, uh, they keep having a crack, uh, Hawthorne. Luke Hodge, that was really risky. It almost came off port, nearly intercepted it. But they get it round the other side of the ground, inside 50 now. Loby under real pressure now, Hawthorne. Can't afford to concede a goal here. Bruce, rough head, Boak. Wanted the give and go, Wines pulled it back, had it on a string. Got to hit the target and he does, Schultz. Schultz can go down the field to Gray. One on one with Gibson. And it was a wise choice by Gibson not to keep it in play against Gray. He gets the congratulations of Grant Birchall. So just a momentary lull in this one. Brust. Dangerous spot here for Port. Got to go. Roughhead did. Little handball out to Hill. Caught in a double tackle. Ebert. Corns tackling for his life here. I'm not sure that Roughhead had possession of the footy there. And he's furious. He said, I didn't have it. The ball was on the ground. And it was. He never had it in his possession at any time. You couldn't believe it, Rough. Loby. Hodge. Will Langford's had a big second half. He's done a great job on Travis Boak and winning a lot of the footy himself. Bruce from the intersection of the 50 in the boundary. Gunston might play on goal. 28 point Hawthorne lead. Biggest margin of the game. Well, the Hawks are winning some easy clearances now, and so are Port Adelaide, but that's because Port have to roll the dice around the stoppages. But in doing that, if it doesn't come off, it has to be perfect. Hawthorne are getting some clean clearances back the other way. And that is going to make it really hard. Jack Gunston hasn't had his biggest night, but a crucial goal might put it out of reach. Have a look at that. Pretty good technique there. Didn't get into his back. Was in his side the whole time, and it's a nice mark. So Hawthorne now well and truly on the march to the last day of the season. Roughhead took him on, kept the arms free, Hale back to Roughhead. An extraordinary seven goals on offer. He can get it. Is that a hamstring for Hopsch or is that Crabb? so sure. I think he's in trouble. The trainer's putting his hand up, so yep. he's not in a good way. Stolen by Gray. You, you, you. Carlisle is being solid all game, but Ruffhead again looking for another opportunity. This time fed out the handball to Gunston. You can see the player in trouble in the background. My ball. Injured player. No. No. In contest. My ball. My ball. We're throwing it up here. Throw up here. Injured player. Yeah. They get the best umpires, obviously, this time of year, and they just got composure, and that was a smart thing to do. They hold it up as we wait for Jack Holmes, who's... I think he hit his head on yeah, the ground he as he landed. Yeah, himself out a bit? He may have just... Right yeah, there, man. yeah, knocked his head on the ground, which I could get. He's been brave. So's Jonas. It's just tough when you're playing the best team, probably, of the last four years. And you, they're coming off a break and you're not, and it's just starting to take its toll. Yeah, he looks all over the place, Hompsch, he doesn't he? Stunned, perhaps even concussed from there, and Ken Hinckley ponders a whopping 29-point margin here now with only 11 minutes in the game remaining. It's 
short footy to Moore. Moore keeps it alive to Lobie. Thanks, Sean. Hole. This is what Hawthorne have just done brilliantly all night. They forced Port Adelaide to be slow at times. Long kick down the line. That's not how Hawthorne, uh, Port Adelaide want to play. Brilliantly defended again. Shields, high ball back where it all started. Lobie the man that kicked it. Now Chad Carlisle to White. To Boat, back to White. Looking to penetrate with run through the middle of the ground. He's got an opportunity here to see Wingard. He marks. Gives it to Monfries. No one in the square. Monfries drills an attempted goal. That was touched on the line by Lake. See, they're going to be a good team, Port, though, are they? They are going to be coming next year. From fifth position this year into a prelim. And a young side. Gee, if they get hold of Ryder to help Lobie. Yes, and help the forward end as well with Schultz. Simpkin, the sub, does he get a game next week? Brad Sewell, what's he thinking? Is Jordan Lewis going to be any good? Is that the way it's going to finish? Here's Segler, short one to Hill. Clean ball. Gray now. It was middle stump. It was more. Quick give Ebert here. Carlisle under the pump. Just finds it, O'Shea. Jonathan Segler. He's playing for a spot in the grand final. No big boy McAvoy is sitting there. He's going to play in a VFL well, grand final tomorrow, but hasn't been his best game, Big Segler. I wonder if he's just opened the door a bit for McAvoy today. And what about Rioli tomorrow as well? Yeah, he Sir plays tomorrow. Back. Well, you think if Rioli gets through the game tomorrow, he plays, doesn't he? Yeah, as the sub, maybe, next week, yep. or does he start? Mate, well, I don't know, but... But jumping the gun a bit here anyway. Well, if they make it, he definitely yeah. get picked. That is for sure if he gets through the game. There's no doubt there, for me anyway. Smith, Spanger, done well competing up forward, just like he does down back. Ebert tried to take him on. Hodge got him in the tackle. And Shields with a blood nose. See, one of the great things that uh, they've had as we see Liam, Liam Shields go off the ground. So, Surioli, if he's fit, does he play next week in the grand final? I think an overwhelming support for that. If he gets through tomorrow and plays well in the VFL grand final, you have to play Surioli in the grand final. I think you have to because he's that player that can create something out of nothing in a big game. It could be the difference. It's a bit tight, though. No, no, no. Common sense, come on. Yeah, no, I've got the middle. right? Just wait, I'll let you know. Straight back, keep the meter, keep the meter. Keep the meter and then lock. <laughs> Holding the man, Port Adelaide. Great. Oh, yeah. Play on, play on. Got to go now, eight and a half minutes here. 28 point margin, must score, play must on. score. But it's not going to happen. Saw Travis Boat get boot to ball there. They've had a great win in the second half. Will Langford's done an amazing job, Richo. Will Langford's had 12 disposals in the second half, seven clearances. He's kept Travis Boak to nine disposals and two clearances. So Boak was best on ground, and Will Langford has gone, and he's just a, had an amazing role. He's emerged in the last couple of months, hasn't he, Langford? Bonafide uh, senior player now, and a good one. Monfries has snuck out the back here, and Gibson in the field with him. So it's a Monfries free. Give a carpool even. Look at his face. Well, he has to have got all ball. I'm not sure he did. Let's see. Yeah. No, he interfered with his attempt to mark. There's only one guy going on the ball there, Josh, in the Excuse me, I think it was a legit legitimate attempt at trying to spoil from Gibbo. He, he was going the ball, but I think you've got to pay that. Yep, agree. Monfrey's goals as a result, and it's back to 22 points. So it's not done with yet. Steve Birch was saying, you owe us one. He cost us one. Gibbo still can't believe it. I, I think he's pretty stiff on that. Having a look at the replay, but they've got to get their heads back on because... Plenty of time, 22 does. points is very gettable. So Josh Gibson cannot believe it. He feel, feels as though he's going back. His eyes on the footy the whole way. Matt Monfries makes contact. I, I think it's a really harsh free kick for mine, but...
Regardless, it's a goal, and now 22 points and seven minutes and a bit to go. That's enough time. Plenty of time on the clock, Dars. Not plenty, but enough, perhaps. Eight minutes, seven and a half minutes, an eternity in a game like this. 22-point margin, and with the quick-scoring power that Port are capable of, it's gettable. That's right. They can score quickly. It'd be the greatest comeback of all time, though, I reckon. Well, it would, but we love history, Richo. His rough head has just been excellent. If they kick another one in the next minute, Richo, what are you going to say? Yeah, they're a chance. All right. Here we go. Richo, here we go. Up to the forward end for Port. Got to go and committed to Ray and out of bounds. Now Port have got it into a very nice position. Part of the big crowd at the G, 74,000 plus. Tonight. We know Sydney are there. John Longmire's here. 74,856 to be precise. Boak lets it rip high footy. Here's Wingard. He's marked. Wingard is marked in the pocket. Now, Richo, if he kicks this, it's back to 16. Yeah, back within three goals. And he loves this. Chad Wingard loves the moment. Non-preferred side, though. Looks like it's going the left foot banana. Huge kick. Goes the left banana and he goals! Wingard has gold. They're back within 16. They're a big chance. He was always going to kick that. He just was never going to miss. Lee pointed out before, he's had a shocker tonight, Chad Wingard. I think it's probably the quietest game he might have played this year. But really talented players. They just find a moment, and all of a sudden there's some tension around the G. A few nerves creeping in. Oh, yeah. Well, that's pictures of Koshi live. I'm not sure where he's going, whether he's got a commitment, but he might just want to take a seat for a moment because that gets it back to 16 with six and a half on the TikTok. Boy, oh boy, Richo, what do you got to say now? A uh, big chance. They are. Look at this. Broadbent to Moore. Moore inside the square. His knee on the lead. Kick too heavy. Just a touch too heavy. This is the problem, though. They've got to roll the dice. And now Hawthorne have got players out the other way. Huopolo. Oh, what's Sister. he doing? He ran out of tarmac. Segler, Shields. Bombs inside 50. Big defensive play here for Port Adelaide. Alabani Garlisle bullets the handball. They're away again. Boak with an inside kick. Looking for White. Needs some help from Moore. Did well, Simpkin. Moore went and got it. They're away again are here. Beautiful handball from Boak. Over the top to Hartlett. He's got a lot of space and time. Takes a bounce. Wants to go inside. Little one here to Westhoff. Handball over to Wingard. Wingard gets around. Handball to Wines. Step through. Caught the tackle. Spills the need. Oh. I reckon if that didn't spill to Port Adelaide, that would have been play on. Illegal disposal. Illegal disposal. Good call. Gee, they're coming, though. What about how brilliant they are just to keep taking the game on Port Adelaide. They all keep rolling the dice. Wingard, all of a sudden, who's had no influence, suddenly he looks like he could kick another couple and make this a really tight last five minutes. They've got to get one-on-one, -on -one, though. They can't let Hawthorne milk any time off the clock here. Exactly right, Richo. Somehow they need to find a way to defend. They've got to force a ball long to a contest to give them an opportunity to win the ball back. They can't let Hawthorne control the footy. 2011, Hawthorne lost in the prelim by three. 2012, they won over Adelaide by five. 2013, five-point win over Geelong. They've all been within a goal of the prelims. The last three for the Hawks. They'll be saying, oh, no, here we go again. Wingard, long handball. Schultz is a big kick. He's a thumping kick. He squirts that inside, and his mark has been paid to Polak. Right Clear out. Clear out. You're right there. Polak could nearly go the journey from right there. He knows it will take right his Jeff, best. Run. This right there, to set the G alight. Segler's bolting back. He has oh. to get back to the goal oh. line here, the Ruckman. Pollock from 55 metres. It's right there. 
It's there! I think it's a goal! I think it's a goal! I think it's a goal! Yes or no? I believe it's touched on, just like the check. It's a goal, it's a I goal. reckon. Score review. Umpire's call is touched behind. Please check. Thank you. I think they will change this. I think it's a goal. That's a goal. Port are going to be given a goal. Just hold for... This point, the score is a goal. Ball was not touched. It's a goal. Port Adelaide are back within 10 points. Goal. All clear for a goal. It is a goal. Port are back. Four minutes to go. They're back within 10 points. The place has gone berserk. This is unbelievable. Hawthorne have stopped. They are just coming, Port Adelaide. It's almost in their favour. So the score review comes into play and... At a big time, does. It does. And from that angle, you have to say that ball is over the line. We'll have camera experts tell us that sometimes it looks one way and it could be the other, but good courage. The score review has said definitely that was over the line. Four minutes to go. Ten points. Plenty of time. Absolutely. And look at the Hawthorne defenders. Everyone's pointing the hands around. They've rolled a loose player back. Richo, what now? Well, Greatest comeback of all time. Oh, I said it, and it will be. Well, here Stand we go. By. I told you about their last pr three prelims, the Hawks, all within a goal. Look at this. Out of the middle. Pittard took him on. Moore got caught, and that's a throw. Jeez, they were out too. And Wingard, all of a sudden, he came off half back, got a really slick handball out. Look at Sam Mitchell. They're going to try and... They're not looking to score, though. No. They're looking to save it. They've stopped. They have stopped to walk the Hawks. Burgoyne inching little footy. Won't be long before Port get the one-on-ones they're after, and now they've got that. Lee, a bit far out to uh, hang on to it, do you think? Yeah, as long as they're controlling the ball and moving down, but well done, Port Adelaide. Forced long to a contest. Got to win it back. They do indeed. Off hands it comes, Puopolo screwed at the handball, Jonas sets up Wingard, little spearing ball, West off handball to Boak, Langford tries to run him down, Boak got rid of the ball, here goes Lake with a big thump, Port got the numbers, Boak caught, Wingard, 70 out, gets it in, oh boy, oh, Monfries yes. is marked, oh no Richo, Monfries is marked, within 20 metres, this to get it back within a kick. Angus Monfries, no need to hurry. No need to hurry. Unbelievable scenes. Hawthorne have stopped. Port are back within four points. They're back within one straight kick. Can you believe it? At the 11 minute mark, they were 28 points down. Ah, oh, this is out of control, this prelim final. They have stopped dead Hawthorne. And now they have to find a way. All the run is Port Adelaide. All the body language is Port Adelaide. All the fan support is Port Adelaide. They've just got to find a way. They can't go in this shield. They've got to kick the next goal. They can't try and hang on. And yeah. It's been these players to Port running off the back of the square. And if you look down now, they're lined up across the back of the square, the Port Adelaide players. They're just going to sprint through the middle of the ground. Hawthorne have got to try and win it. What about this set play? They're like... Uh, in a 100-metre sprint at half, back, ready to go. It's amazing. Four goals in 10 minutes of play here. That's what they've done. Off-hand, Puopolo, two minutes and 33. Four-point game. Every one of their last four prelims have been within a goal. The Hawks. Advantage, advantage. They've got the free. Boats found space in the middle. Overrunning of his rough head. Westhoff, Wingard, long handball. Here's Boak. Well done, Langford. Langford and Roughhead. A nil all draw would be a good result here for Port. He's back. Port have got the free. He's back first. Polak's free. Oh, you've got to clear out. Time 60 off. metres. Clear on. One minute 58. Clear Short out. ball wide to Pittard. Pittard gets around on his non preferred left. They're all there. Westhoff crashes the pack off. Hans Gibson and now Suckling with a big kick. A big kick wobbling towards the boundary line. And it goes over. Gee. So Port lock it in. He could have rushed to behind there, Suckling. 
all the attacking run, all the brave play. And this is why you love Port Adelaide. This is why you love the message Ken Hinckley has given them all year. Listen to the crowd. He has said, we would rather take the game on and risk losing it. And they are the aggressors at the moment, Port Adelaide. Oh, John Longmire, 10 minutes ago, thought he was playing Hawthorne. White, this will be mark. a chance to score. Moore is marked. He's within kicking range. And this, this to blow the season wide open. Boy, oh boy. You can't believe it, Richo. The Hawks fan, the Hawks players could believe it. out on their feet. They look tired, they look shell shot. This to hit the front. It's a left to right. It's very, very tight. All right, can Hawthorne hold it now? So one minute and five seconds. Tough kick for Moore. We've seen plenty kicked from there this year, though. Sean Burgoyne, the man. You wouldn't want it in better hands than with Sean Burgoyne. Have a look at the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Burgoyne pumps it long and wide. Mark Ebert. He doesn't waste any time. Brilliant smother Hodge. Oh, look at Jonas go in. What a smother from Luke Hodge. Oh, gee, that's a big call. That replay there of Luke Hodge, the captain. He might have just got his team into a grand final with that second effort. Harsh call. He gets it to Mitchell. They might just be able to hold on here, Hawthorne. They're a little disorganised here. They've lost the man on the man. Look at Burgoyne. He's free. Mitchell not taking any risks and going near goal, though. He said the boundary line is where I want to be. Hello, Paddy Carlisle right marks. Out. They've right got 25 out. seconds. They've got to go. The runner's out there. They know how long. Hartlett. Oh. They've got the Schultz free. Place. They have. Schultz can kick it inside oh. 50. He takes a bounce. It'll be a big kick. Here comes Monfries. Monfries and Lake. Lake and Monfries. 25 seconds to go. Five seconds. Right. Two seconds. He's gonna... Oh, I thought he was going to play holding the ball. Hawthorne have made the grand final. Hawthorne have won. A promoter's dream. Buddy versus Hawthorne. The two best sides make it. down there with the skipper of the Hawks, Ricky. Oh, Hodgie. Yeah, what what I can't, was that? I can't promise I'm not going to swear accidentally here. Um, you gave me a lot. Oh, mate, this is a... Oh, it's an old token one, but finals at its best. It's... So what, our, our last four prelims have been close encounters like this. It's, uh, it's a reason why teams get to the last four, four sides. It goes right down to the, to the finish. And, Tell you what, mate, look, we knew Paul were going to come back. They've been a quality side all year. We watched, we saw what they did last week over Fremantle. We just, we knew they were going to come. We just, uh, once again, when that siren went, we are on the other uh, lucky side of it. They were certainly coming, were they? And your smother, Ebert, I thought he was going to pump the ball inside forward 50. Just a desperate lunch. Pretty happy you got your hands on that one. <laughs> mate, to be honest, I think I just tripped over. I was that exhausted <laughs> and I just landed on the ball. But, oh, look, mate, we, we did some, uh, some good things late games. We also did some disappointing things as well. So, Perfect part about it is we got next week. We'll go through, we'll look at it, and uh, it's, uh, it's good to uh, it's good to make it another grand final. But we found out a couple of years ago the job's not done now, so uh, it's another big game coming up. Some huge performances by some of the younger guys who haven't experienced that grand final uh, yet. Will Langford just terrific against the skipper Travis Boak. Must be loving the fact that those guys are going to get to play in the grand final as well. Yeah, it's exactly right, mate. Look, it's uh, it's good they performed tonight, but they, they've been performing all, all year for us. There are. Uh, we don't ask them to do any more than they have to, and that's that's their mindset. They go out, they do the job. Lang has started the game, going out trying to get the ball, uh, and then once Spoke started a bit of an impact, he was able to. He was pretty versatile to, to change his role. So that's all you ask from young guys and the older guys is versatility. And when the coaches and the and your team need you to do something, they're able to adapt. How good is this? How good is this? Great, <laughs> well done, mate. Oh, well done, Luke Hodge. Their 18th grand final appearance in the last 54 seasons. Yeah, great call from you, BT. It was an epic. It was just one of the most amazing finishes that you've seen. Let's get back down to Cameron Lee. Go, Lingy. 
did the job on Travis Buck. Will Langford, you're into a grand final. Well done. Yeah, thanks heaps, Lee. That was uh, a bit scary there towards the end. Uh, but yeah, like you said, we're in the grand final, so that's what counts. And uh, next week, obviously, the build up will be exciting and then a massive game uh, against the Swannies. Well, how good is that? You're playing in front of a huge crowd. It's a preliminary final. You're in your first season. You can deliver something like that. You must be, I mean, no doubt proud of your teammates, but proud of yourself as well to be able to lift in such a big game. Yeah, I suppose so, but it, you, know, you know better than anyone. The team is really what allows individuals to play you know, well. So I suppose say maybe I did okay, but really it's the group working together and the systems that we have in uh, place that allow everyone to uh, perform. Uh, certainly, though, I'd just like to mention uh, Bokey particularly. It was a great contest and certainly uh, started to get a bit of it towards the end there. So I was working like nothing else to try and uh, run him down. Like I said, it's just nice to have the win. Oh, you're a very good man. Now, your dad played in six grand finals. He won four premierships. Are you going to send him out for a little bit of advice during the week? I think it might be nice to sit down, have a coffee and have a chat because um, I'm sure there's uh, something to be learnt there you know, if you're playing six uh, grannies. But um, no, I don't know, I just try to take it week by week and it's just another game of footy for me. So that's, I think, the attitude I need to adopt. And uh, like I say, we're just to recover and big week uh, and it should be exciting. It's good well fun. done, mate. Enjoy this and uh, good luck next week. Thanks, Heath Lee. Well, uh, Will Langford down there. But the big story brewing is that man you just saw on camera, Jordan Lewis, will he or won't he? That'll be the question that's asked all week, Darst and Richo. It happens every grand final, isn't it? There's always an injury cloud, and uh, it'll be Sam Reid, and it'll be Jordan Lewis. Let's get back down to Lingy, soaking it up down there. Oh, I certainly am soaking it up down here. So is Sean Burgoyne. Shawnee, you're into another grand final. That's just what you do, isn't it? Just playing grand final? Yeah, I've been, I've been pretty lucky, you know. Um, I played at a great club before Hawthorne, and uh, yeah, this will be my fifth, so, you know, I've got a 50% strike rate at the moment, so I'm going in pretty positive at the moment. No doubt you're absolutely loving it, but do you feel a tiny bit for the Port Adelaide boys, uh, being a former Port player as well, how close they got? Yeah, I do, you know, that, they are such a massive part of my life for a long time, and my wife's life as well, and uh, I, although I'm, I'm really happy to get in, I'm, it's a bit sad in a way because, you know, you see the work the boys have done off the field over there, and they, they get themselves, they gave themselves a good shot today, but, you know, I'm very happy that we're in. Thank goodness for uh, Luke Hodges' hands over there too. That smother, just to stop the ball. He's a ripper. He is. He, that's why he's our captain. He leads from the front uh, every week. And, you know, the, the last two prelims we've played in, you know, you know, I think two points, two points, five points, something like that. So we, we, we prepared for a tight, tough game. And, you know, this is what happens. Well, well done, mate. Sensational effort. Enjoy it. <laughs> no worries. Man. You're watching Finals Footy on Fox post-game. Brought to you by Wolf Blass. Thanks, Lockie. And wherever you may be watching it here on Fox Footy, I hope you're enjoying it. What an enthralling afternoon. And I look at my panel and I think... I'm trying to read each person's mind, particularly yours, Dermot, because I reckon at one stage you had Hawthorne probably going out to a 40 or 50 point lead. I had them 50 plus when yeah. they got to 28, 29 points. I, I actually got up and left the TV and went and got a drink. Uh, I came back and they bought and kicked two quick ones. I went, hang on, what's going on here? Then they tried to slow it down. They actually tried to guard the game a little bit early, I thought. Yeah, it was that's extraordinary. What it was like. That's what it was like when you're reading the game situation and you had to say where it was going. It was a 40-point win, or 50 points, as you said, Derm. Uh, you just expected the scoreboard to blow out. And it's I saw fantastic another side, character by power. I saw another of side of you, the Brownlow medalist, because I thought the advice at times you were giving to the umpires, particularly <laughs> oh, in the last quarter, yeah. there was a, perhaps a suggestion no, there could we have been along, some controversial decisions. We get along very well, but uh, I would suggest maybe in their review they might have a, a couple of things to go over. <laughs> Shory? Oh, look, a magnificent effort by Port Adelaide uh, to get back. I thought they were gone, done, dusted. I was like, Derm. They'll, they'll look back to the first quarter. I, I think you can yeah, look at the whole game. But when you kick that, time. when you, the first quarter was the thing, they should have stitched it up. They should have been 30 points out. And Hawthorne probably would have had their time in the sun. But great year by the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Gee, they've turned oh, this. Yeah. They, are, they were a basket case two years ago. And to turn this around has been a great effort by not the, just the coaching staff, administration, everybody. We're going to follow Hawthorne in and, of course, they'll sing the song. But this Hawthorne side we're looking at now, um, they've got Sydney, who we mm. saw last night. Admittedly, it was against a different side in North Melbourne, Dermot. Can they beat Sydney? Sydney definitely, on that performance, deserve favouritism going in this week. They yeah. moved the ball quicker. Yeah, uh, they had the ball... <laughs> 
They had better scoring power and they moved the ball with a lot more pace than even Port Adelaide did when Port Adelaide got on a roll today. So, And they got midfield depth of real, real quality, hardcore season players. If you had to say, though, based on the context of the season and North Melbourne, where they're at, you'd probably say they overachieved. Yeah. Port, based on the season they had, they had a lull, but they, mm. they showed they had high quality football involved in them. So if you had to classify the opponents, you'd still say that Hawthorne had the tougher class, yep. if you want to call it that. Yep. And Sydney, though, were clinical and relentless. So um, it, it meant that Port were able to take a little bit more off the Hawks mm. because they were just slightly better in a few areas than perhaps what North are. All right, let's join the boys now. They've got out of jail. They've held on to win a thrilling three-point preliminary final. And I'm tipping they'll be reasonably happy about the outcome.